Imagine unlocking the power within you to truly transform your life. Hi, I'm Jill Collins, and today we are joined by Emily, also known as the Angel Coach, a celebrated expert in awakening feminine intuition and magnetism. In this episode, we'll dive into how to tap into your true feminine energy can bring profound changes to your relationships, health, career, and overall well-being. Emily will share her seven rays of feminine consciousness for harnessing your power with practical steps you can take today and how to overcome blocks that might be holding you back. If you've ever felt stuck, or wondered how to access your full potential, this conversation promises to be a game changer. If you're alive and you're breathing, there's more to you. Your history, your past, your yesterday, you are no accident. It's okay if you're uncertain, it's okay if you're confused. We've all been there. And the thing that's so beautiful, that's part of the breakthrough, you're right on target, you're right on time. Because in this moment, you get to decide, I get to be more. It's my breakthrough right now. How do we find the just as I am and use our feminine energy to transform ourselves so that we can really be and make an impact. Because I think a lot of people are sitting here going, I, I just don't know what that would be. And I want to help, but I don't know what to do. Is it helping ourselves first? And it, maybe that's before we start reaching out to others. Yes. And thank you. And great question. I will rewind a little bit and I'll come back to this because I'm being shown a vision. So since I was a little girl, one of the things I'd see literally as a little girl walking, hanging out with the family, or even I'm from Puerto Rico, so just moving through town and going to the stores with my parents, I would see what I would describe as a web, like literally what you see a web and a spider. But it was like a web of light and we were all very interconnected. And it was this beautiful reflection how beyond this physical body that we're in, we are walking each other home. Regardless of how people show up, regardless of what we get to see in the physical, there is this, there is this unification, thank you, that goes beyond the physical reality we see. And they were showing me that and they were, thank you, and the vision they're giving me is that idea that anytime you bring yourself into that alignment, into that healing, you turn the dial. And they showed me a vision of we turn the dial and then this web of light brings more a light. It brings a different frequency. It, it gives us an opportunity to see more of what we're hoping to see, right? More joy, more peace, more connection, more collaboration, more forgiveness, more of a union versus a separation, because that's a little bit of what I like to call the programming that we've been all put through. <laughs> it's like in the forgetting. And so that's a vision they wanted me to go back to or, or, or go ahead and highlight. And then if you don't mind, can you re-ask your question? And I apologize about this. That's okay. I think I had a couple in there, but I think, and I love this because it's, you're talking about things like separation. And I think that's our way of protecting ourselves, isn't it? From with our egos. And we're afraid, we tend to always say we play small because we, when we have this protection mechanism. And I think as we jump in and we say, no, I, you and I know this, is that once you see things, start to see things, you can't unsee them. And I know, I think recently I said, to God, I just said, you know what, can I just go back to before you showed me all this so that way I can just live a normal life or not normal, but like a life where I don't feel called and there's not such this feeling of expectation. And I said, I'm done. I just want to go back to eating crap and like watching TV and, and having all of my vices. And I just don't want to do this anymore. Like I'm out. And I said that and I laugh at it now. And you know what that actually ended up being? It ended up being surrender. Mm -hmm. It was I'm done trying to figure this thing out. And as soon as I, and I'm jumping ahead, but it was, I just, I was done. I said, I can't be whatever it is you think I'm supposed to be here because it's just too much. I can't do it. And the word keyword was due. So when I'm saying this is that it, I think the question was something along the lines of when we're feeling like we don't have anything special to offer and we don't know who we are or we, or we feel confused or we're going through a dark night of the soul is how do we tap back in and, and say, no, I've got something to offer. And, and what is it? And, and I want to really give people hope here is that there's hope and there's excitement. And so help us with that. I hope you're enjoying today's episode. And if you are, consider subscribing. 93% of you that listen to this podcast regularly have not yet subscribed. If you like this channel, can you do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button? It helps this channel more than you know. And the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests get. Thank you. So what I'm audibly hearing them say is that we all, all of us, by the way, all of us move into the pivotal moments in our lives. 
And women, especially, right, in certain ages, it's sometimes we may feel this transition and the transition can feel overwhelming because it's like, who am I now, right? Maybe the kids are out of the house and they don't need you the same way. Maybe your partner is not there anymore or the relationship has changed, right? It's like the body is changing. The way we feel about ourselves is changing, right? There's so many things that happen within the unfoldment, right? Involving this human experience, but thank you. And what they're audibly saying, it's like all of us have these beautiful opportunities that are pivotal into reclaiming our true identity. And a lot of times, and this is the gift of it, is that confusion, that disillusionment, that sadness, that uncertainty that you're feeling is helping you to know that the identity and who you've been has been outgrown. That you move into a faith and a beautiful faith of getting a chance to see that your life is being called or thank you, they're saying the word destined, that you're destined to be more than what you've been. And part of this beautiful stage that women go through is this deeper yearning of remembering, this deeper yearning into understanding that life can be different. And it's like a, it's like a wake up call. And yes, for the human, it could feel very co- uncomfortable and confusing, but it's also an opportunity for us to, and they're showing me this vision of, of a woman like sharing all these other clothing items, right? It's like we pick up, I like to say we borrow right? We borrow expectations. We borrow who we need it to be for the kids. We, need, we borrow who we need it to be for our spouses and our partners and our business and our work. If we borrowed all these things and we, women at this stage are at a place where they get to say, what have I been borrowing and sharing for way too long? And you ask yourself, well, what do I do now at this stage? It starts by saying, what can I let go of now? right? This has been too heavy. The weight has been too much. Now I can let it go. And the thing that's so beautiful is that our body communicates that as it's going through its transition. It's helping us surrender. And unfortunately, we we try to hold on to so much of what we've borrowed. We try to stay in our own identity and we notice the resistance. But the truth is that our body, our thoughts, our emotions are going through a dance. And the dance is inviting us to pretty much let go of what is no longer needing to be carried through the next phase of, of our remembering. We're at a place and at, st- at that stage of life that we have access to wisdom, right? We get to step into an experience that it's not just about me, right? It's not just about thyself, thank you. We move from the I to the we, right? There's a yearning for more. There's a yearning for, thank you, there ought to be saying craving. Right? There's a craving to experience more of life. And it is a beautiful place to be, even though it doesn't feel that way always. But it begins the first step that you can take if you're there is what have I borrowed along the way that I can now set aside? What have I borrowed along the way that is no longer part of what I'm choosing to carry? And this is an important word, choose. Right? What am I choosing to let go? What am I choosing? to surrender? What am I choosing to now allow myself to be? Mm, I'm hearing you and I'm, and I'm getting this is we carried a lot of bags around a lot of our, we're borrowing a lot of outfits, a lot of things that we've been doing. And I'm hearing intentionality and, and being intentional is, I love what Michael Beckwith said recently. It was to say not, who do you, what do I need to do? But who do I want to be? And so it's that, who do I want to be right now in this space, stage in life? And, and how can I tap into that? And so it's, to me, what I've personally experienced is that calling and seeing things in meditation and feeling, seeing visions and feeling sensations and having these insights. And I go, yeah, and they're so darn big. It's just, whoa. And you can get excited about it for a time. And then all of a sudden, when we get back into that, our, our earthly bodies, or we aren't in that space of that really elevated state. That it's like, how are you going to do that? That's crazy. Are you nuts? And then it's, let me go back and suck my thumb for a little while and go do something that makes me feel good. But I think I've talked about this before is that at some point, these vices are these ways to comfort ourselves, to play small, to have the ego feel okay and safe. They don't serve anymore. I joke around and say, yeah, Netflix isn't even working. It's nothing's working. Nothing feels good anymore. And there's that point where you're just standing there going, okay, so 
what do I do now? Nothing's working. What is my, what are my options? I just want to feel okay. I want to feel good. I want to feel comforted. I want to feel safe. And that's the ego struggling, I think, with, with the spirit, isn't it? With our inner being. And it is. And there's several things that they just, they were talking or mentioning as you were talking. One thing is that old ways will no longer suffice, which you're, you're saying it, right? In your, in your own unique way. And again, it goes back to this beautiful reminder and invitation that there's these pivotal moments we move through life that are offering us an opportunity to upgrade our identity, to upgrade who and what we are. And it's so wonderful, right, to own and celebrate that which once served us and that which, like you said, the Netflix, those things that might have numbed or comforted in the past no longer suffice because it's, it's this stirring that allows us to know, wow, it, it's time for me to experience that upgrade. And, and I'm saying experience because it's happening for us. We move into these thoughts and conversations and illusion that, okay, what must I do now versus allowing the experience to move through us as it's already destined and intended to move through us. And it goes back to this beautiful recognition of the feminine. The true nature of the feminine has already awakened into owning and understanding that we dance through it. And I know I mentioned a little bit about the seven rays of consciousness. I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about this now because when you said intentionality, that's one of the first stages that we teach and is the queen, owning your queen. And what that means is that the queen within her feminine knows that her intentions matter, her decisions matter. What I like to say are hell yeses matter. And it's very significant for us to move into a place where we get clear about what that would look like, what that is, right? Outside of anybody else's opinion. Because what tends to happen, especially for women, because it's part of the programming of what's been downloaded for women, is like, how do I conform or how do I fit in? Or how, because we're a bit, we've been, we've been blessed with the desire to be more in community, right? We feed off each other. We know that we can thrive together and can experience life a lot fuller in community versus on our own. And for those that have experienced life on their own and have pushed their own, it's because they've been allowing the masculine to lead more the way. Oh, I like that's interesting. So that so is, isolation or independence is more of a masculine trait versus the feminine trait. So let's reframe this, right? Because languaging is very important. Yes. Right. And there's nothing wrong with independence. Independence is, is also part of the feminine. It's about pulling away from the experience that has been part of the feminine, which is understanding, is finding the right community that can help you be seen, that can help you feel supported, that can help you feel understood. You can be independent through that, right? Because part, thank you, and they're audibly saying it with different traditions, and I know they're saying cultures, and I recognize that happens in my own culture. I'm from Puerto Rico, is that like you have, you can't put your guard, you got to be strong. You have to like, it's like the need of needing anyone is not something you should even admit or, you know, it's like it's, but it's moving outside of that illusion that I must be alone and doing it on my own. But instead moving into, wow, life has designed itself where I am destined to receive. I'm destined to be supported. I'm destined to move into who I am and be an independence of it. But also know that there is this resource available beyond what I can see that can guide me and support me, not just through the angels, through spirit, but through community, through sisterhood. And that there is this inherent resourcefulness that awakens within me and activates within me, within the feminine that will pull me, that will speak to me, that will guide me on how to best do that along the way. Okay. So the community aspect is really important. I know you have a community, which we'll put all of this information in the links in the show notes here to, for, so everyone can get access to that. So the seven rays of consciousness, is it ways or ra rays? What is it? Ways. Ray. R-A-Y-S. So yep. R-A-Y-S. And the way, and the reason they've been, they speak to it that way is because they do want people to connect to that concept of the rainbow. It's like rainbow, you can't really touch it. It's energetic. It's like a visual thing, but it's like holographic a little bit. It's like that idea. This energy moves through each of us. These rays move 
through each of us. And they move not just physically through us and as us, but they move beyond us. Um, and that's why they deliver it that way. Okay. I see. So that the first one was the queen embracing our queen. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's that part of that is really owning who we are and then also embracing the desire for community of other women. And how would a woman know and feel comfortable? Like, I think we've had, I'm sensing like trust issues with women sometimes. And there's this need to like want to feel comfortable in a community. How does that work? How do you feel like there's a, is it, how do you test and say, okay, this is the right community for me? Or I just, I already have my friends. I don't really need a community. Or what is that about? I just sense resistance and I'm trying to figure out how to ask that question. You no, know, it's perfect. So I'm going to go back a little bit because the queen actually doesn't highlight the community. The feminine in general knows that there is a power in community, right? Because she understands and again, inherently understands that there is, there is this ability for us to quantify what it is we want to create in our lives. There's an ability for us to quantify our decision to heal. There is an ability for us to quantify more of who and what we are when we're in community that allows us to be seen. And deep down inside, thank you, I love that, with the stage of life that, you know, that you're highlighting here is that we're yearning and craving to be more authentically ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we get to a place where we're like, who am I? Right. Who am I? It's, I want to be myself, but I don't even know who and what I am. So what tends to happen is that we revert to what we learned from our mothers, what we learned in our society and in our community, right? Tangibly our community, because we see it in our workforce or whatever it may be. And we tend to go back to that when in reality, we're at a place where we're like, okay, I get to untangle. I get to move into owning who and what I am in a way that is upgraded, right? That it's not based on other people's expectations, but I get to actually remember and own who I really am. And the queen within the feminine is that part of thyself, they're saying, that part of thyself that allows you to move into decision, into intentionality, and into leadership. That you yourself are the captain of your ship. You yourself are the captain of your journey that you get to take ownership of what life can look like today, that you're able to be the one who directs and orchestrates and opens up into the receiving aspects of it because you are here to create. So the queen knows that. So when it comes, and this is a great conversation because we've talked about this in the Sacred Garden, that part of the programming is that, and, and in our society, right, we get taught to compare, we get taught to look a certain way. It's like we're constantly like, it's like putting our guard down becomes dangerous. Thank you. That's interesting. They're saying dangerous. It can feel dangerous. And it goes back to why this work is so important. It's so important because it is up to us to move into a place and space of healing, which allows us again to heal the children so that these cycles don't keep repeating themselves. And the thing that's so beautiful within the feminine and when it comes to even magnetizing, thank you, manifesting, law of attraction. So when you bring yourself into this balance and tap into that resourcefulness within you, it is mind-bending how you get to literally witness how you attract different women into your life, different people into your life. Okay. And what happens is that, yes, of course, it makes sense for fear to come up. Like I've met women like this and that hasn't been my experience. That makes sense because you're basing it on your history. You're basing it on your past. But what happens is that when you move into this alignment, this harmony of the feminine, you will see it be different. Right. The people who get drawn to you, the people who get pulled into your fear are going to mirror this decision that you've made as a queen. They're going to mirror what it is that you've claimed and chosen to step into. And I know there's women, and I, I get it. There's some of you saying, I don't know if this really works. Is it even possible? And I'm so blessed that I've worked with thousands of women that we get to celebrate this. We get to see this. We get to see the practicality, you know, and the functionality because we get to see how it does work. One of the ladies, it's cute because she was sharing in the group that 
She was walking the dog and she's people are stopping to say hi to her. People are offering to help her. People are saying how beautiful she looks, men and women. And she wasn't seeking it. But it was her own alignment exudes. And the angel teach this. It's even our pheromones change. So th there's this beautiful sweetness that exudes out of us that even the way people experience us changes. Okay. Because what I'm hearing is, and I'm looking for the, if someone's listening and they're watching this and they're saying, okay, I want that. I, I want relationships. I want to be, a, I want to be magnetic. I want to manifest. I want to be able to create a life I want. I, we need to kind of touch a little bit more on how we do that. And I think those are through the raised, but it's tell me what I'm going to get in my life by doing this or by being in the space of fe in the healing power, if, by healing my, and having great feminine energy and being in alignment. What's in it for me? Why would I do this? So, great question. There's so many different things. I'm asking them where to start. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing an angel say, it's part of your destiny. It's our destined arrival. So we'll start there. Let's talk about the practicality and how you do that. What the angels have taught us and have shown us is that when a woman is born, and I know this is a deeper conversation, our bodies, our physicality as a child, as a baby, downloads to programming, the collective programming of what it means to be in a woman's body. And unfortunately, our history has a lot of trauma and pain and the need to be extra cautious if you are in a female body. And that's just our history. So what the angels have taught is that organically, unfortunately, and fortunately, because that's why we're moving into this, is that there are parts of the physicality within a woman that are tense and they're constricted or restrictive. And one of the things that the angels have been teaching within the feminine is ways to move the woman's body, which help us unlock some of those things that have been passed down from generations to generations from our mothers along the way, along the history, not just personal generational history, but collective history. So practicality, they're giving us tools that have us, and again, they do it with every ray they introduce, how to move the body to help unlock that part of the physical self that allows you to make better decisions, that allows you to own more of your desires that allows you to know that you can magnetize and attract. So they do the practical aspects, which is incorporating the body in the movement. Then they move into the conversations, the mindset. And I, I will try my best to put it into words, but they deliver exercises and they have conversations that help rewire and rewrite the story in the mind. And all I can call it is miraculous because women are having these experiences that they have things happen at night. They have things happen in our call. That, and, and some of you already experienced it. Some of you are getting chills. That's what I'm talking about. It's like something else moves through you because, again, you call yourself home by getting a chance to remember these truths that you already have within you, but you have been inundated with the old stories and the old programming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And unlocking. And they were showing me like a code. Boop. <laughs> you get to figure out, that's why we call it the feminine code, is you get to unlock and use the code, which will organically and naturally do what your body already was intended to do, along with every other part of you, your mindset, your emotions, and those parts of you. Now, let's talk about the practicality of what happens. And I am going to give you guys Can some Can I tools. jump in? Before you do that, I want to oh, yeah. make sure we, we get clarity here because I'm hearing, I love the unlocking and rewiring ourselves and rewriting our code. And so someone who's saying, yeah, I, I get that. Like I'm sabotaging, like things just don't always work out for me. It's just, it's never, things don't ever seem to go right. Or I keep messing things up or I'm just not who I used to be. And so by being in the space and following this and really listening to guides and, and as we're going to go through this more, I just want to touch on someone who can say, that's me. I know energetically and spiritually people are being touched with, without even, they may not even hear the conversation. It could just be in the presence of this energy, but that there are those who are saying, yeah, okay, that's me. I get it. That's what I'm missing in my life. And I need to figure out how to crack this code and unlock myself to who I, what, who I always was and remembering who I am. And I love that you're saying it this way, because this is a thing that I want to encourage all you ladies to know. 
and, and it may not be easy to hear. You're not meant to go back to who you were. You're not. And who you are going to, and my voice is changing, so I really need all of you to hear this, is that who you are being called to upgrade into is more auspiciously delicious than you've ever experienced. It's about understanding that you're going to move into a place and space that you get to really look at life and say, wow, life is really happening for me. Life is really about me leaning in and dancing. That's the thing that's so beautiful of the feminine. You don't have to be great at dancing, but we, our bodies have been designed to move. Our bodies have been designed to move our hips. And doesn't mean you need to go out dancing. That is not what I'm saying. But literally, our bodies have been designed to dance in this life. Literally, to dance, to respond to challenge. So that we can thrive through chaos, regardless of what shows up. The beautiful vehicles that we're in, regardless of the size, regardless of the shape, regardless of what has happened or hasn't happened, has been anointed with the ability to dance through life. I'm and, someone listening to this right now and just saying, I haven't danced in years. I haven't I opened up myself to feeling any pleasure, any just fun. Because I think a lot of times we forget what fun is. And yeah. we see fun as something that we see through others' eyes. It's the children laughing. And we say, oh, they're having fun, which makes me feel like I'm having fun. But I'm not having fun. But I'm watching and I'm, I'm seeing them. I'm, in, I'm joyful by someone else's experience. And I think there's such a fine line. I don't know why we're going in this direction, but I think it's really cool because this is something that I've noticed a lot since the pandemic is that we've changed how we communicate, how we connect with people. We're sitting in our houses a lot more. We're not as engaged in community and one-on-one -on -one with people. And as we get older, our communities and our, our circles often get smaller. And are, we're relying on either our children, our grandchildren, or family members that we were caring for, and we don't have a wide circle. And maybe if we work, we might have a few people at the office, but they're not going to be talking about this. And so we feel like we're not, we're silent and we're unheard. And I want everyone, if you are watching this, I'm not just, this is not a pitch just to get you to subscribe and to watch the video, but please share this because I'm feeling right now that there are so many women out there that need to hear from Emily and need to hear this message right now. And it's just touching my heart tremendously that I want every woman, every man, everyone, children, I want you to play like children again. I want you to feel that joy and that excitement and that's what Emily is showing right now. That's what her angels and guides, and that's what we're, we're bringing right now, is how to feel tremendous exhilaration and bliss like you may not have experienced since you were small, if ever. So be open to that and share this. Go ahead. Thank you, Emily. I just want to Thank you. Thank you, Jill. And I do want to give some practical tools, and I want to talk about all the seven rays because that's actually one of the rays. It's called the innocence. The feminine owns innocence, and that's the awe and the wonder. And I'm getting crazy chills everywhere, so people need to play with this thought, right? All of us have been anointed with the ability to be in our innocence. That part of you that is in awe, that part of you that is in wonder, that part of you that can laugh and be playful, not because the external is creating it for you, but that you yourself are that. And that's actually a beautiful thing that happens organically, not by doing, but organically happens for us. Thank you. And you're saying in our favor, it happens in our favor as we awaken more of the nature of who and what we are. And I share this all the time with my community, and it's so important for all of you to hear this. All of us are here on purpose more than ever, more than our ancestors, more than our past. Like you came into this lifetime deciding that in this life, I will remember. In this life, I will own more of myself. In this life, I will experience more joy. In this life, I will own today that I'm able to create and design a life that I get excited about, that I'm passionate about, that I get to move into the joy that reminds me, like, thank God I'm alive right now. And the reason I know that is because that's where we're at collectively. All of us are here at a time where we've been given a different permission when it comes to our human experience. And part of that permission is that you get to remember more of who and what you are, and you get to experience life without 
everything that you borrowed, we get to let all that go. A lot of times what happens is that, and this is, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, but I've done it. We move into programs that have been passed down. We move into thoughts and conversations and ideas that we learned from our mothers, that we learned on TV, that we learned in our expectations of what should happen to our bodies. It's something so simple. And I know it sounds so my periods, and I know it's going to sound, but I'm going to just share a little bit, right? Like I had horrible periods growing up, horrible. And I met a girl, I met a girl who had three-day periods. And I'm used to having seven, eight-day horrible periods. And I remember that when she said that to me, I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that was possible. (laughs) All right. And and I'm going to just share something because I really need all of you to hear this because some of you, and I know it's not intentional, some of you are moving through some emotions and through physical changes that guess what? You don't have to move through that. And my period was an example of that. And I remember when she said that, I had a conversation with them, right? I said, angels, how come she gets to have that and I get to have this? And I was challenging, right? Because I'm like, I don't want it to be that hard because I would literally have to be in bed. This even happened after having kids. Like this was my history. Oh, I just saw a huge orb. The angels just flashed a bunch of orbs because all of us need to hear this. So please tune in and listen right now. So I asked them and they said, it's what I learned to borrow from my mom. It's what I learned to borrow from my history. So I decided, I was like, I want to have three-day periods. I, I don't want them to be this long. I don't want them to be that heavy. And I literally went into a process, into a prayer. And I said, I am so grateful for my history. I'm so grateful for my ancestors, for my mom, for my grandma. I'm grateful for what they've blessed me with. But this, I choose to let go. I choose to let my body know that it can have the gift of my menstrual cycle without all of this. And I literally had a conversation with my body. I had a conversation with my past. I thanked it. And then I chose my queen, right? My queen decided what I wanted moving forward. And now my periods are two to three days long. Yep. Okay. It did. It shifted. Okay. So I'm hearing this. And I, for the days when we had periods, for those of us in midlife who maybe have already gone through that, yes. something we can transfer to like morning fog. And I don't know, a lot of things, people have night sweats or whatever. I don't have that or I've had hot flashes, but a lot of people have various things. Tell me about that. Because I just got back from the biohacking conference and there were all these ways that you can use different medications or... Do you for hacks and all that? But I'm loving this on the spirit level. So let's dive in. Yes. And that's actually why, and that's probably why they wanted me to start with a period because I recognize most of you probably aren't having to deal with that. And I get it. But I want you to know that is an example of what can happen to the body. Now, because the menstrual cycle is an opportunity for the body to move a certain way, it's not about removing the the menstrual cycle, by the way. But that was a great example because we've all been there. And so you're showing that you actually were able to... It's it, let me question this. Let me see if I can change the way that I was. It, you're saying so when you said that you're you accept did the outfit or the clothing. But uh, how did, what is the word you used again? The, the I borrowed right. Well, the you borrowed that you borrowed that from your mother. And so I'm thinking as you said that, like my mother always said, oh I've had menopause I'm menopause for years. That's and it. And I went. I am. I'm always like I love my mother. Mother, I love you. But it's I'm not going to be. That's not going to be me. I'm not doing that. And so I rebel against that. I'm like, ah, I don't have any problems. That's just, no. Well, now I'm getting a little bit, I'm going like, okay, brain fog. You can see at the beginning of the interview, I'm a little scattered sometimes. But that's this, but it's that. And so it's like, where am I borrowing that from? Is it because I'm resisting that I don't want that, that I'm getting it? I know manifestation would say so, right? Okay. So this is what's exciting about the conversation, right? So there's, and again, I want to make sure we have time to talk about the rave because I, I want to give you that guys change. tools to move forward with. And it's connected with all of this, by the way. So my voice is changing. So my family history has borrowed that menopause doesn't happen to us. Like we, we just don't have symptoms. We don't have it. And I'm very blessed. Me, my mom, my aunt, my grandma, we just don't have it. We don't have it. We don't even know if it happens, right? We don't have the fog. We don't have this. We don't have all these symptoms. And 
part of what I want to encourage, because I remember I asked my mom, I said, it's interesting because these women are talking, I don't have that, but I'm also deciding I'm not having it. So we had into, and she goes, oh no, our family just doesn't have it. And I said, tell me more. And she goes, well, your grandma never had it. So I had a conversation with my grandma. And I said, was that like that with your mom? She goes, no, I just decided. I just, it's cute because my grandma's, I was like, it's just not what I wanted. It's the same thing. We never stink. Like, it's funny because it's like decisions, the positive thing that happened with my grandma's decision about what she wanted with her body generationally was passed down and it's impacted the women in my family. So you can be the one that starts this decision. And the way you do that is that you take a moment and identify what has been the history for me. Like you just said it, Joe, right? I'm having fog. So write it down. What is the history for me? And then you're going to identify what has been the history of my past. And I'm talking about family history, but I'm saying the word past because the reality is you could have picked up a belief system along the way or an expectation about what your body should or shouldn't do from not just your mom. It could have been an aunt. It could have been a grandma. It could have been a TV show. It could have been a book, all of it. So you're just going to look at the past and just say, the history that I picked up has created an expectation like this. And write it down. Menopause happens at this age. These are the symptoms. This is what can happen. You need medication. You need this. And just make a list. And I'm sharing it because they're all, they're visually giving me a client that I work with, which she has completely healed autoimmune, completely. And part of why they're giving me, I feel like the reason they're giving me this client is because when I started working with her, she started to have symptoms and we were able to shift it, right? So she didn't just have the, <laughs> she had the symptoms. So she did this. What I'm giving you an exercise to do right now, she did it. She untangled from that, stopped the menopause symptoms. And then she was able to see, oh, wow, can it also happen with the autoimmune? And I'm like, of course. So we worked on that. And of course, we can celebrate now. She's at a very different stage, doesn't have symptoms, and is also cleared of that. So I am sharing with you, ladies, that the exercise I'm giving you now works. You also have to move into deciding that it's going to work for you. Because if you have history or you have a belief or an expectation, it works for other people. And I'm getting really emotional. Wow. Oh, I'm getting very emotional. And what that means is that there is several of you who have this belief. It works for other people, but not for me. Oof, I'm getting, okay, I'm going to try not to cry, but they're moving. So they're moving it because it's moving for you right now. So if you've had that belief, I want you to just put your hand on your heart and just take a deep breath and just say, I know that in the past I've had this belief that it works for other people and not me. I know that in the past I have thought that I'm not good enough or worthy enough to see the same results as other people. And I, I, I want to say that has been my past. That's my history. And I'm so grateful that in this moment I get to decide again, that I get to own me that I get to choose that, of course, it works out for me. Of course, I am so loved that even if I haven't seen it before, experienced it, I get to decide now that I want it, that I'm worthy of it. I get to decide that I get to see life working out for me, that I get to open up to receive. I don't have to lock myself down anymore. I open myself to receive. And I can lean into trusting that the angels are going to keep me safe. As I open up to receive, as I open up to seeing that life works out for me. And then just taking a deep breath. Some of you might feel chills. I'm hearing that they're audibly telling me crackling. I don't know what that means. So some of you may even hear a crackling in your ears. And then I want you to decide I own this right now. I own this today. I own it. I own it. I own it. That it happens to me too. It works out for me too. It's destined to align for me too. And thank you. And they're audibly saying, just deciding that you're willing, open, ready, and available to receive. That you're worthy of it. Hang on. Mm. All right. It is. Yep, it is. All right. Let's go back into the exercise. That was intense. Thank and you for that. I, that was beautiful. That was the, beautiful. The tears that wanted to come through me were like, like what I call the ugly cry. 
Like it just wanted to come out. So I wanted to make sure we talk to you because if this was you a few moments ago, a few minutes ago, it is done and trust that you now can be in the receiving. Okay. You can be in the receiving. So this exercise, again, looking at what's been your history, what has been the past. And then what you're going to do is that, again, you're going to journal this and then you're going to create a line that you're going to say, I, I, I now create this, this line. I, I choose to leave this in my yesterday. I, I decide to leave it in my yesterday. So then you're going to move into your queen. What do you claim instead? My body is so resourceful that it moves through this stage of my life with grace and ease. My body is so resourceful that I'm actually activating more passion, more euphoria, more joy, more playfulness. It's so resourceful that my body and my joints feel an ease and movement. I crave intimacy. I crave love. I crave, I crave the play. Right? It's like moving into deciding what happens now. What happens now? So that's the queen. Then you're going to move, right? You're going to move into your innocence. The innocence is that awe and wonder. It means that you're open to the unknown. You're open to seeing things looking different. So then you implement, what can I do to add more awe and wonder in my day as I anchor this new decision? So that could be playing music. That could be I, something I do every day. I watch funny videos for at least 10 minutes before I go to bed. I feed my happy, right? How do I feed my happy? That's it. How do I feed my happy? So that the intention is anchored through the journey of joy, through the journey of happy, feeding the happy. And then we move into the sorceress. The sorceress is that you're walking magic. You are literally walking your legs, your magic on legs, right? So what happens with that? You open to life, the magic. You open to your body activating the magic, right? So it's not doing it. No, it's magic happens. Miracles happen. Changes happen, right? Something else takes over and it's done for you. It's done through you. It's done as you, right? You move into the magic of things. Then you move into, what's the next one? We move into, sorry, because they're flashing something else and I'm like, we're not there yet. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, then you move into your pearl, right? That your body is a healing container. That you're the healer. You're the healer that you've been waiting for. You are the medicine. The medicine is you. It's not about seeking the medicine externally through somebody else or through certain things. You are the medicine. Thank you. You are the sacred pharmaceutical is what they just said. All right. So then you move into that. And then you move into, they're saying, I'm going I'm to have to skip to Freya. And I don't even know. Freya is that part of the seductress, right? And I'm skipping because they're telling me I need to skip to that. So then there's the seductress, which is actually the ray that we're covering this month for in the feminine code in the sacred garden. The seductress is that part of you that you're magnetic, right? You get to have this and that. You get to be happy and abundant. You get to have love and abundance and success. You get to have and. It's not about choosing. The woman has been programmed to choose this or that, right? Success or children, health or career. No, it's an and. It's an and. And she knows that in her magnetism, in her seduction, in her passion, in her ability to feed her own yumminess and her deliciousness, she attracts anything and everything and people and opportunities and things just show up. It's not about figuring it out. What am I going to do next? What am I here to do? You get to witness how it shows up. Opportunities show up. Conversations show up. Doors open up where you're like, oh, wow, this is my next. This is where I get to go play. This is what I get to lean into. I, I love when you said to me once, you said it's the flow versus the push. Yes, yes. Yeah, this is. And it's sometimes we are so trained to, what am I supposed to do? Now, I get it, Jill. I get it, Emily. But okay, where do I start? What do I do? And you're giving us steps. But I think the whole reminder here is these are actually leaning in and just letting things show up and letting things flow. I, other than the journaling aspect, right? It's, I, I think if I'm getting this right, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's 
really just there's so much resistance I think that we experience and we I think are addicted to a lot of resistance when there's no resistance one I think a lot of times we're bored we look for we're looking for for problems or no we don't look for problems we, we need a challenge and something to fix and to solve to stimulate our ego and to stimulate our bodies to feel like we're we make a difference and we matter and that's our way to show our worth and our value but when everything's just flowing and things are coming to us it seems off because I think we're just not used to that. So that is something that you're showing is that this is how life really actually is for us. We just make it hard. So let's, if something is important and they're audibly saying this is, I love that you're bringing this up because this is not you. This is it. If you have all those emotions, that's not you. That's not the real you. That's who you've been programmed to be. That's who you've borrowed. That's you literally think about it. You're walking around with somebody else's costume. You're working around with somebody else's dirty dress. You're walking around with somebody else's dirty wig. Like you literally are, that's not your nature. That's not who you are. So all these things that you're sharing with me are, if this is moving for any of you, I just want you to know that's great. It served you to today. It served you to today. And my conversation and this invitation is you are being called home. You're being called home to be authentically you. That's not authentically you. That's just who you've borrowed. We literally walk around with masks and we walk around, again, wearing other people's dirty clothes. They're telling me to say it that way. We walk around like most of us would never do that. Most of us wouldn't want to walk around with anybody dirty. I wouldn't. But we do it. We do it with our belief. We do it with our expectations. We do it with what it is that we say we're worthy of receiving or not receiving. It's what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's why the queen is the first step into understanding that all that you need to do is decide. You're, I'm, deci I'm deciding right now for you to just show me there is something better. It's like that decision. And, and I hear it. I've asked this question. I've asked it since I was young, and I've heard it from people all the time. If we're always being guided and supported, why isn't it done for us? Why isn't this just happening for us? Because we are in a world of duality. The human gift that we have, and we all wanted it in our soul level, we're like, I want to have free will. I want to get to decide what I want, what I don't want, what's the hell yes, what's the hell no. I get to decide. That is part of the agreement. Sign the dot. If that's an agreement, then fine. I'll go ahead and have a human experience. We all wanted that built authority over our life. We all wanted that. And then we're waiting for something to slap us across the face and be like, here, I'll do it for you. We'll take care of this. We'll make it happen. But you have to, do and I'm saying slap around the face because they're audibly telling me is that we walk around holding these beliefs and all this stuff and we're like holding all this dirty stuff. And we're like, there's another way I want to see it. And right, we're literally right. asking. We're getting in our own way. Yes. A lot of times we want to make it more challenging. We want to, I, this is me because I'm analytical this way sometimes, is I want to understand it cognitively. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's just no way to understand it cognitively. I try to explain it when I'm here to explain it in a cognitive way, but it's not that easy. And so it really is just that I get this vision or this feeling of what I think it was Howard now, Eckhart Tolle said, is that, or Mike, no, it was Michael Singer in one of his things. He says, when I get a thought, he said, I just lean back, take a deep breath. And the thought passes by. There's nothing to do with it. It's just, a, it's I'm watching a movie. I'm watching that thought. I'm, well, that was a weirdly weird thought I just had. Or that thought just passed by. How interesting that I'm not good enough. Wow. Really? Okay. See ya. Instead of, am I not good enough? Let me I dissect it. Let me figure out what I need to fix here. What do I need to do different? Maybe I'm, oh, I should, let me look at Instagram. Oh, everybody's better than me there too. See, I'm proving that I'm not good enough. And so then we just, we take it so far. But it's just that. This is so easy. Yeah. It's just really yes. letting go and just. There's nothing really to do here. <laughs> Just not trying to fit, to mess it up because it's already like at the free will, like you said, duality is that we get in our own ways trying to figure out how to fix ourselves and there's nothing to fix. And I'm grateful you're bringing this up. So let's look at the logistical, right? Like the more the left brain that people have to hear, right? So there's, we, there's a reticular part of the brain, right? And I say this all the time. The angels remind me this all the time, whether you want to look at it from a spiritual perspective, metaphysical perspective, or you want to look at it in a practical perspective, our brain works a certain way. And if you have a belief and an expectation that something needs to be a certain way, even if it's hidden from your human mind, even if it's hidden from the conscious ability to pinpoint it and point it out, 
you are going to manifest that. You are going to be only that. That's just how the brain works. That's, thank you. And they're saying quantum physics is, they're oddly, and they do. And by the way, I, I'm going to trust or not going to go into it because sometimes they'll start, they'll talk quantum physics and they're giving me words. I don't even know what it means. So I have to Google as I'm talking to people, but they're telling me quantum physics is also proving this theory. So if you're more logical, I think that's exciting to celebrate is that there is data out there that you can look at and actually see how we are able to change our DNA. We're able to change the physical anatomy of our physical being. And it's not just metaphysical. It's not just spiritual. There's science proof behind what happens when we move into certain expectations and belief systems. And again, the reticular brain, just more on a superficial level, right? It's if we have something known and unknown that we are holding on as an expectation and belief, we will find it. We will find it. I just had this conversation yesterday with someone. The angels taught me this since middle school in science class. They would say to me as I'm doing things and experiments, they would say to me, everything can be proven right. They would say that to me. It's interesting in the human perspective where we're like, let's just prove it. Everything can be proven right because when someone holds on, that's, and we know that, right, in science experiments, that's why they have the observer effect, right? It's like the observer can impact the results of a science experiment. Mm. So with the logical part of it, it's look at your life. What is happening in your life? The good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly. What is part of the the recipe. Thank you. What's the rest? What, what is your recipe giving you right now? And if there's things in your life that you're not happy with, or they're not going the way that you would like them to go, it's about just stepping back and saying, what's the recipe I've been using? My voice is changing. What's the recipe in my human? What are the thoughts that I've been having? What are the emotions? What are the expectations? What have I borrowed? I always like to say, what have you borrowed? Because it's a lot easier for us as humans to be like, oh yeah, my mom was like that. Or my dad had that expectation. Or I learned that from a teacher. It's easier for us to sometimes look at other people versus ourselves. And it's what have I borrowed? So if we look at the recipe and then even the energetics, the energetics of what is in the recipe. And what I mean by that is that how do you feel energetically every time you think about your body? Do you drop? Do you go up? What is it? And if you notice that your, bo- your, your energy drops when you think about your body, when you think about a lover, when you think about a beloved and a relationship and what's possible, if your energy drops, then there's something in your recipe that is letting you know it's not possible. And the reality is that the truth is that it is destined and it is possible. And I say this to everyone, if you've been seated with the desire of a beloved, if you've been seated with the desire of a partner, it's because it is done. The angels prove this to me over and over. If it's been seated, it is done. It's about you and your human staying on the path that will allow you to experience it. We don't get, we don't get played with. We get seated what is possible. And I have met many people who don't have that desire, right? And many of you would be like, Everybody wants to have someone to love and and be part. No, there are people out there who don't have that desire. And the reason this is important here, because people be like, oh, everybody wants it. It's you're talking yourself out of receiving it because it's something everybody wants and it doesn't mean everybody's going to get it. You're right. Not everybody's going to get it because there is, unfortunately, with our wounding and our history, there's a lot of people who have been trained to believe that you must be worthy to be loved. You must earn your ability to be loved. And the fallacy, thank you, yes, the fallacy within that is that all of us have been born worthy of a beloved. It's whether or not we are letting ourselves consciously or unconsciously be available to it. And I know we went on a tangent here and I apologize. I have to honor everything they give me. So I know we totally can't okay. this is one of those interviews. I, I will say we have questions and I'm just, I think we are in flow and it's just splendid. It's just splendid because I, I think this is what needs to be heard. And I want everyone to just really get that, that this is how sometimes we need to operate in feminine is it's not always structured and tasks and things to accomplish. This is so beautiful. You said something here though, that I'd love to get clarity on is when we're thinking something about some things, like maybe it's a relationship or how do we feel about it, and we can, it's telling, they're telltales with how we're feeling. 
and the sensations. How do we know it's our, not our ego? I've asked this before of other guests. How do we know that it's not our ego trying to protect us versus intuition? Do you know, sometimes it's, oh, no, that guy's not good for you. Oh, no, I just, but I got a feeling about him. I'm, I'm telling you, it's my intuition telling me no. Or is it fear and we're short, we're protecting ourselves and maybe missing. Not everyone has this ability, and they can, I believe, too, is have the abilities you have to be able to be in touch with their angels and guides and have a direct connection to divine, if, however you believe. But that, how do we know that's the case? How can we check in? So this is a great question. And I actually would teach this to my college friends who, and it's going to sound so different. So sometimes the best way to know is to decide how you're going to know. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes the best way to know is to decide how you will know. Because sometimes it's like we're in it. We wait till we're in it to then decide, is this my ego or is this intuition? Why not just begin now, if you're open to it, deciding, spirit, soul, universe, this is how I'm going to open into seeing that this is it. And for me, for example, when I meet someone who is out of integrity, who doesn't have the highest for me or anybody, they stink. They can be as handsome as they are. They can have cologne, but literally I will smell it. And it's interesting because this didn't show up for me when I was young. It showed up for me in college when I started dating. And I, I just set that intention. I wanted, I wanted to be very clear. I don't want to engage with certain people. I don't want this to be part of the mix and they'll stink. And I started teaching my friends that. And literally they'd be like, oh, look at this guy. I'm so interested. And I'm like, oh no, he stinks. And they're like, what do you mean he stinks? I'm like, hey, he doesn't smell good. This is someone who's out of integrity and blah, blah, blah. They cheat, like all this stuff. But that's part of what has been trained. And I've trained clients to do the same thing. So this is a tool that I'm going to share with anybody who's looking for that. It's just same thing. Make that exercise. Okay, what's been my history? What have I borrowed from the past when it comes to relationships that haven't worked out? And you can even write the people's names and all that. And then what you're going to do is that you're going to train your brain and your mind. You're human. This is what's so funny. Your soul is always doing this. It's about training and keeping your human in check. That's why I also say when I do guidance stuff for myself and I check in on stuff, I'm like, okay, what's my human thing? So this is another tool right here. What's my human think about this person? And then what does my soul think about it? What is my higher perspective? Tell me about this interaction. And the thing is that the spirit, the soul, these angels are never going to talk bad about anybody, by the way. But they will let you know that there is a mismatch. They will let you know that this relationship is an opportunity for you to learn something you may not want to learn, right? So it's, it's a way to, you can do it that way. What does my human have to say? And what does my spirit have to say? That's one way, by the way. Two, prepare yourself by just making that decision. I am open. I'm open to angels. You work with my smell. Work and help me to notice when someone's not a match. Like I've literally made that decision. I've trained people. So I know some of you will be like, that may not work for me. No, it works. It's just you making that decision. But again, let me go back to, they're telling me, go back to the exercise. So you're going to make that. And then you're going to go through the people who have not been your highest experiences. And then you're going to go ahead and in your mind, just move into the decision. Oh, this person, I can smell that they stink. I know it sounds so different, but I want you to literally do the exercise. And then what you're going to do, you're going to same thing, create a line. And then on the other side, you're going to put love. You're going to put beloved. And one thing that I always share with women and men who are working on calling in a beloved or even money, even success, I would change the word you've been using. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're like, I want a husband or I want a girlfriend or I want a wife, whatever it is you choose to call in. I would suggest there's a woman I'm working with specifically right now. She's, I want my husband. I'm ready for it. And they have. That word has so much baggage and so much wounds and so much trauma that her using that word literally automatically closed her human off. It was crazy. It was sabotaging any future possibility. So they had to change the word. So for her, they moved her into beloved. I have another client that they audibly said the words euphoric intimacy. So it's like moving into that. If you are calling 
a partner, instead of moving into the old languaging, find a languaging that gets you excited and turned on, like euphoric intimacy. I right? love that. I love that so I, much the way you're doing that. And, and you know what you said too that I love is it's, um, it's almost like we say, give me a sign. And someone says, oh, I just, I got a sign. I saw dolphins or I saw this. And that the sign seems to be a moving target all the time. Like, I just saw this number and let me look it up. It must be that. that. And so it's, to me, I'm so logical. Sometimes I go, okay, but that yesterday, your number was something else. And so it's, it's like, you're saying, please give me a sign. This is going to be the sign that I want you. You're asking, please show me with this particular sign they smell or whatever it is that you need that will show up. And so that's your directive. So they go, gotcha. Okay. We're on board here. We're going to, we're going to show you that. Is that what you're saying? Is that, you're, yes, you're, but let us just saying, give me a sign, but you're saying, here's the sign I want to have. So, so I, I want to speak to this. It's important. Energy's moving. So I am not, that's not what we're saying. So I'm going to oh, just okay. a little bit because this is where the human can get dangerous when it comes to law of attraction and they're moving energy. I had to write a little bit of what they just said because I didn't want to forget it. And this can happen. There's a part of us that wants something so much, right? That we will literally manifest the signs, right? We want it so much. We want it to be that person so much that Tony says that, right? We call something beige when it's really brown, right? We will literally, our brain will convince itself that's a sign. Yeah. It's so we're not inviting you to create signs that will say thumbs up to the person. We are inviting you to invite signs that are helping you to know this isn't it. It's different. Okay. Okay. Because so our, me, because so you're saying inviting signs that that will show us that this isn't it. So it's not necessarily, it's not like a little trick and a little, here's a little thing. If you show me this and I, this guy gives me a quarter, then this is going to be the guy. It's something more. And so I had this in an insight and tell me if I'm off here, but what I got instead of like giving me like attraction. But I actually prayed for divine deflection. This sounds weird, but it was deflect anyone that isn't right for me. Don't let me be tempted. It was my prayer. I said, don't let me be tempted by someone that's going to send me off the wrong track that's not right for me. And um, it was funny how sometimes in a weak moment, maybe an ex would show up or I'd be like, and it really, I'm like, no, I'm not going back to that. But then two weeks later, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have called him. But then he wasn't available or there, he wasn't responding or whatever. Do you see what I, So it's almost like, People were just, and, and I noticed that when I did that, being on a dating app, like all of a sudden, a lot of people just, my, the, the, the action of like responses or likes fell off like crazy. And I went, huh. So is that kind of, am I on track there with that? Or is that something different? Yes. And I am going to have to, I'm going to have to reward this real quick. Hold on. So there's two things to this. And this is going to sound very interesting for me to say this. I want to encourage or discourage anybody from ever stating, if this can throw me off track, I don't want it. Ooh. Because this is why. You have to own and decide, I, life is always working out for me. I am always being guided into the momentum moving forward. I'm always being pulled into the right momentum because you are unconsciously and unintentionally inviting <laughs> to be off track or to notice when you're off track. I know it sounds different, but the angels have taught me this very clearly. So you got to focus your intentions to what will support what you've decided as a queen. So when I say to you or invite for the angels to help you notice their scent is because you're being, you're asking to notice people's true intentions beyond the physicality. You want to smell people's true intentions, right? So that's why the scent is a powerful, how many of us, right? When we're about to eat something, if it stinks, we just, we literally discussed it, right? There's no questioning. Maybe it was. They were sweaty. Maybe. No, it's like we're disgusted. And it's not because the person isn't good, but we're getting to see people's true intentions beyond the mask. So that that would be my encouragement. Okay. But owning that you're always on track, because the irony is that if you're always on track and you're always on the right momentum, you're going to easily be able to decipher when someone is in a match. Right. So when that level of ownership is owned, you could very easy decipher when someone is in a match. 
So that's one thing I want to throw in there. And relationships is a very interesting conversation. And I've done twin flame events. I've done soulmate events. I've now stepped into when I teach about it, I talk about the cosmic flame, which is different, which is a whole different conversation. We can't get it. Maybe we could do this in another show, but that's a different conversation. Sure how to really align to a cosmic flame, which is different. But when it comes to relationship, and this is where it can be interesting, is that there are people we're destined to meet along the way. Some of those people are not destined to be our forever, but they're destined to cross our path because they have a key to give us. What does that mean? These people are going to help us unlock more of who and what we are. And they need to cross our path. We need to, we need to take that key right? It needs to unlock us. And in the human experience, we make this decision like, only if it's going to work, only if it's my forever, only if it's going to be this, are you allowed into my field of, of reality, right? But we forget that we are in a human experience in which we've decided to meet goals along the way to help us move into our alignment, into our overflow, and into our destiny and our purpose. And we will get keys. We're destined to give keys to other people as much as we're meant to receive them. So I like to pray and invite. I am open, ready, and available for the love, the connection, the intimacy that will help continue to keep me on the path of who and what I am. That will help promote my highest experience of union with myself, union with God, right? Union with that euphoria that I know has been seated inside of me. Because there are people, and my husband was an example of that. I was very clearly shown and told, you will meet your future husband here soon. They said that to me. And then when I saw him, they said, that's him. We were married for a certain amount of time. And then a year before our marriage ended, the angel, and I know for some of you it's going to create because I'm feeling energy moving around this, Archangel Metatron and Master St. Germain, which by the way, at that time I was very Christian. So the reason this master had to show up this way is because I had to hear it in a way that my human couldn't question it because I in no way would have wanted my marriage to end. And these, they showed up and they said, it is time for you to use complacency or euphoria. I was literally, they didn't even tell me the relationship first. They said, you're being invited to choose complacency or euphoria. So I right away said euphoria. As soon as I said euphoria, the angel said, you are going to get trained for a year. They literally said, you're going to be trained for a year and your marriage is going to end in a year. I remember I, I got so angry at God. I cried. I was like, how could you do this? This is not okay. I choose complacency, literally. All of it. And they said, when the time comes, you're not going to have a choice. And they said that the relationship that they're going to pull me into beyond this is going to represent my euphoria. That being said, a year later, and I literally was like, it's like Tony teaches us, right? I gave him my all. There's got to be a way I can change this. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. So when that year came, his, his brother got murdered. And unfortunately, that change the dynamic of our relationship because obviously understandably in his mourning there was a change a personality change that occurred and it wasn't a match anymore and the change led to our ending so i think it's important to recognize that we've been sold we've been sold that it's about this forever happily in our ever after. And yes, that is available for some people because that's their destined journey. That's what their soul wanted. But there are some of us that were blessed with opportunities along the way to capture and be blessed with keys that are helping us move into a different ownership. And I know this is a deeper conversation. And again, I'm sure it's triggering so many questions for so many of you. But my invitation is that when you move into calling you for a glove, is that you are inviting and asking that those that do not support that intention and that welcoming for you to move into and knowing that helps you to know this isn't it. And one way is like, I want them to stink. I want to smell their true intentions. I want to smell the 
the intention of what this co-creation will bring forth. And if it's a hot mess, guess what? It's going to stink. Mm. Okay. So I, 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 that's an interesting uh, reframe. So it's really giving us a, eyes and awareness through in your in, in this way is distinct to see what is to smell, to notice the the, the pitfalls or, or the ways that this may not be aligned for us. Mm. Yeah. And there's so many things like that I think we can apply, like you said, and in career and jobs. And I think the the whole crux of this, and maybe as we wrap up here, because I know there's so many things we can go into and talk about. And mm-hmm. I encourage everyone to reach out to Emily. Uh, I know I've, I'm going to be working with her too. And I love uh, what she talks about and just the gifts that she has in this world. And, uh, but it's this understanding and trusting, right? Go ahead. Yeah. They just told me, they're saying, we want to speak to the women and low centers, of course, anybody, because that's one thing that's amazing when I do these calls, when I used to do the Feminine Flow Fridays, we would have men join as well because they loved it so much. <laughs> I get men. Here too, like yeah. men and women. So whoever's listening to this, by the way, they're saying we need to speak to them. So let me go back to something that everybody needs to hear. If you're alive and you're breathing, there's more to you. You are no accident. You being here right now alive is no accident. There's more to you. Your history, your past, your yesterday, your this morning, that is irrelevant to your tomorrow. You today decide. You today get to claim. You today get to move into more of who and what you are. It's okay if you don't know what it is. It's okay if you're uncertain. It's okay if you're confused. We in this human experience all go through it. I've been there. We've all been there. And the thing that's so beautiful, that's part of the breakthrough. These arrivals are part of your breakthrough. So you're right on time. So if you're feeling all these things, and that was part of your yesterday and part of this morning for you, wherever it is you're listening to this, you're right on target. You're right on time. Because in this moment, you get to decide, it's my breakthrough right now. I get to be more. And if you don't know what that more looks like, it's okay. Move into deciding, I am choosing to be shown. I am choosing to be guided. I am choosing. And they're audibly saying, I'm choosing to be promoted. I like that. You're choosing to be promoted beyond your yesterday. Promotion, right? You're choosing to be upgraded beyond your yesterday. And in that decision, You also have to decide, I am choosing to be worthy of receiving the help. I'm choosing to let myself be worthy of the help. One thing that I always say is I'm choosing to be ready, willing, open, and available. Ready, open, willing, and available. I just changed it up a little bit. Sorry about that. All right. Because it covers many different angles. One of the things they just taught in the sacred garden is that idea that God has multiple perspectives. And in our human experience, we get, sometimes we embrace one perspective, meaning look at this bottle. It has so many different ways that we can look at it. And we move into our human experience and we are looking at something through this. Oh, this is what I see. This is what's possible. But from God's perspective, there's this side There's that side, there's that side, there's that view. There's so many views to what you're going through. So whatever it is you're going through, it's okay because you're getting to see one perspective. So when you ask for help and you ask to see what else is possible, you open up to a holistic 360 experience, which allows different perspectives and what happens. When you open up to so many different perspectives, anything can happen. Everything can happen, right? And that's when we get to witness miracles in our lives, in our bodies, in our relationships, in our finances, and anything and everything that we are asking for a positive change. So thank you, Jill, for that. Thank you. My gosh, I love this so much. That was a stunning description or or demonstration of seeing how we really are is that we see it through one way. And I would look at it another way where where we say there's what we know. And the, what we know we don't know. And then there's all this huge vastness of what we don't know we don't know. And we can say that about ourselves. And I think sometimes when we try to make decisions or determine who we are and our identity is based on the what we know. And sometimes what we know we don't know. And that's a little bit of faking it, right? It's I don't know this, but this is who I am. 
And then what happens is we, when we ask for things, we're really shortchanging ourselves because there's this huge, I don't know that what I don't know out there that's not available to us. When we say, this is how I want it. Here's my order. Thank you very much. The end. And yeah. the universe guy goes, okay, cool. All right. There's a whole bunch of other stuff out here that I got for you, but this is what you want. Good. Good. No problem. Gotcha. We're good. Yeah. So that's that free will, isn't it? So it goes back to surrender and just really being open to trying that, to being, remembering who we are, truly are. Thank you, Emily. This has been wonderful. And thank you. Thank powerful. you. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you, everyone. Please definitely share this. Subscribe and like the interview as well. Give us some comments. We'll be answering. We'll also be on social media. We may get Emily back in our community as well. Maybe she's willing and we can do some work um, behind the midlife women's community where we will do some answering questions so you get backstage and you can address some of the things we talked about. So we'll be coming out with that soon. But anyway, stay tuned for the next time. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you.